Thank you for tuning in to Rider Cards TV on RiderCards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno. This is my buddy, Dan G. What's up, Pat? What's up, Dan? Not much. Happy oh. birthday, man. Thanks. Today is my birthday. I am uh, 19 this year. Nice. So stoked. You can buy beer in two years. <laughs> two more years. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you bring for us, Dan? So um, this is kind of like an all-of-a-sudden thing. Didn't expect this to show up today in the mail, but mm -hmm. it did. Um, and so I brought a 2019... Um, Tops Living set, uh, UCL, that's the Champions League, um, Lionel Messi living card. Wow, so they re they produced a new design. A new design. Well, <clears throat> so, so this is for soccer, obviously. Yeah. Um, it is not a new design. Right, it's a re-release from a, a re former, from... what is that, it's a football design, isn't Correct. it? Correct, uh, and I, I, I should have looked up the 70 year. 70-something. 70 70-something, yeah. Um, but, you know, I... I enjoy soccer. I coached soccer. I played soccer, and you know, I don't I don't follow it as closely as I do other sports. But it's it's fun to follow, especially when it's a World Cup year. And you know, obviously, uh, Lionel Messi is considered one of the best Truly. in the world. Yeah. And so when it came up uh, in the tops, you know, emails, I was like, ah, oh, you know, why not? And, you know, I mean, it's it, it's cheap and it's fun. Sure. So I went ahead and did it. A um, little disappointed because of the three cards. I I, I bought the bundle. Um, all of them were centered except for number one, Lionel Messi, right? But yeah, I thought it was still cool, and you know, you never know. Sure, it might it might be something big later on down the road. It might not, but I thought it was cool, and I went ahead and got it. Good. Uh, man. So yeah, it showed up today. Um, and still, jury's still out whether or not I'll buy Wave Two. I've got about a week to <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> Who's in Wave Two? Do you know? Um, the big one is Christian Pulisic. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, although I think Sergio Ramos is in there, but I'm not a hundred percent. Um, like I said, the jury's still out. If, if I decide I'll get it, then I'll do a little more research. Right. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. And, you know, the living set idea I think is, is, is fun. Um, there's a lot of people that like it. Although I think in baseball, you know, the steam is kind of, you know, <laughs> they produced a lot. Died down. Year. Yeah, they did. I mean, every week three cards is 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 pretty significant, right? right? Um, so they're already into the. I think they're already into the two hundreds for MLB. Really? Right. Yeah. And so I think the the anniversary, one year anniversary was in March. Uh -huh. um, so not too far off. So that they they produced quite quite a few cards. Still waiting for the McGuire. Is he gonna? Is he slated to be produced for I, the? I don't know who's slated to be uh -huh. produced, but I imagine he will show up at some point in yeah. time. Thomas ended up you know? um, in the, the the living set finally, which is cool. Really? I, yeah, yeah, I, I haven't gotten the that. card yet, but um, they used a good photo of him. I thought that's good. Yeah, that's good. So anyhow, you know, diversify a little bit. Yeah, go into some soccer. Kind of cool to talk about this since we just did a podcast on soccer. Right, saw that. And so um, it's nice to follow up and add some little. Pepper and soccer when we can, you know, because I'm I'm, although I know some of the bigger names, I'm still learning about some of like the minor star kind right. of guys and 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 that. So it's nice to bring in. Obviously, I'm aware of this guy here, but um, you know, there's a lot of stars and minor stars in soccer, yeah. just like there are in other sports. So it's nice to kind of learn about who's the who's who. Right, and, and you know, <laughs> it, it's a it's a global market. Yeah, I mean, it, truly, it might not have the the fire that some of the other sports do, right. but eventually, I think it will catch on. It's going to take some time yeah. Uh, because the, the culturally speaking, we have other sports that are finally ingrained in the American culture, right. whereas soccer is finally ingrained in other cultures. Right. Like that, that's their thing. Right. So I'm not sure if soccer will ever be as, uh, you know, uh, conversationally significant in the Western market as, mm. as baseball and football no, and basketball. I don't think it ever will be. But I think that it'll pick up steam as it already has since right. MLS was founded. Um, and as well so, as the World Cup teams. Yeah, and so it's going to continue to produce large audiences, mm -hmm. but I think the revenue and marketing dollars are going to, you know, it's going to be a while yet before we see that put towards soccer. Right. You know, people aren't going to tune into, like, the World Cup to watch the commercials. Right. You know, they're they're going to tune into the NFL Super Bowl to watch the commercials because right. that's the highest grossing sport that we have in America uh, in terms of the, just, the, just the marketing dollars. So, um, But soccer is, you know, in the Western culture has a lot of potential. And it's just, I think it's going to, we're going to continue to see it grow over time. I agree. Well, you know, a lot of people really like it because of the, the, the nationalities. Truly. 
you know. Yeah. Because I mean, it's a world kids, sport. Right. My kids run around yelling USA, USA. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's it's definitely going to have its following. Truly. So. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, go to a live event, soccer, something that might be entertaining mm -hmm. for some of us. And so, like, I like live events. I'm not too picky about what kinds of live events. You know, I would go see the Kentucky Derby if I if, if I had a free ticket, I'd go. I'd go too. You know, just like a live <laughs> event, watching something happen in real time is interesting to me. Right. And so, uh, if it's soccer, I would absolutely attend. It'd be fun. I played soccer in 1988. You know, when I when I the same year I got into baseball cards. Nice. I, I think it's because my soccer career p didn't pan out, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I got to find something else to do, get interested in. So I picked up baseball cards. Right. I still can't remember what exactly it was that got me into baseball cards. Well, I know what it was for me. Yeah. It was Mark McGuire. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I got in the year before Griffey was in. So, like, right. it would have been Griffey. It was 89. But because I was into, the, you know, card number one, 89 for deck for that whole year. Right. I never got one until many, many, many years later. But um, in 88, I, I, I just don't remember what the, what it was. Right. But um, I do remember playing soccer in 88 and just not being that into it. But it's that early youth you know, structure that yeah. our parents put us in. And so I'm not really 19, so if you can do the math here. Uh, but I, soccer, I had fun doing the team sports with um, just with other people. Yeah, I think it's a good introduction for kids into team sports. And Truly. It, I think a lot of parents think of it as non-contact, and so they're, you know, more inclined to allow their children to play it. Um, I mean, getting, getting your shins kicked in is not yeah. the greatest thing in the world. But well, you're not like getting your head bashed in, so well, at least there's yeah. that. I've seen I've seen some kids get their heads bashed. <laughs> really in soccer? soccer. Yeah, yeah. Oh man! I, you know, I coached high school, yeah. you know, varsity for a while, and yeah. so a few staples and heads and stuff like that. Yeah. Like Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Broken femur here and there. <laughs> the shins get beat up in soccer. Well, I that's started why wearing they wear shin guards. <laughs> I started wearing shin guards skateboarding because my shins were getting beat up skateboarding. Right. And I was like, dude, shin guards have saved my shins since then. And I, I started using them about a year, uh, a year and a half ago, I guess. And um, can be happier. Well, actually, last June is when I had a bad shin accident. Okay. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. So I went to the house of soccer, grabbed some shin guards, and it's just been. I, you know, it takes a little we're getting used to, but they're lightweight enough to you don't feel them. Right. And so I really appreciated that, you know. And so now I they're just going underneath my jeans, and I I just have an extra added layer of of, of armor, and it's really nice when right. I'm skating. So that is my skateboarding information for the day. Thank you for listening. A personal information yeah, here, <laughs> right? Uh, so thank you for bringing by, bringing by the um, Lionel Messi card. That's really sure. cool. I, I I feel like that's um, I've seen. Uh, maybe like a Randy White or a uh, Steve Largent that came out of the original set of that design. Right. I'm trying to envision those cards now that I think about it. So when I saw that, I immediately was reminded of some of those older designs. I really like the 70s stuff that Tops yeah. produced. The it's colors cool. and the designs are just so cool. I agree. So we're going to fast rewind because we're going back to 2010 again. I, I talked about this set a lot because I just, I just like it. So... I, I cherry pick stuff as I see it, you know, stuff I, I like. So, uh, a couple, I want to say 2015, probably before 2015, but 2015 was when I saw um, a card at the National, a, well, a version of this card at the National. It was a BGS 9.5, and I think it was, it was a blue auto, and I think the guy wanted like 20 bucks. And I was like, really, only 20? He's like, yeah, like I would love to get 24. I was like, and I was thinking to myself, well, gosh, this stuff has really gone down. Right. Uh, Felix Del Bront is the guy we're going to be talking about. He was a, a prospect in the Red Sox system, played very briefly in the MLBs, and then has now uh, produced a career in baseball outside of MLB, just like as a coach. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but his stuff was hot for a short minute. And I learned about his, his spike in popularity, like, I want to say like 2012 or 13. Okay. And so... I didn't really pay attention to it in 2010 because I don't think anybody was. He was just another guy in the 2010 Bowman Chrome prospects set. So I started paying a little bit more attention to him over the course of time, reading about him online, researching his news, like what he's doing. Um, learned about he had just a short little career, but he had some spikes and some, some heat in his in his career for a minute. And I go back to like, oh, well, let's see what cards he's got. And I was looking at like other things and I learned about his other Bowman Chrome cards and and I was like, well, I like the picture on this card that we're going to be talking about here. I'm going to like build it up, right? 
And because and so I, I picked up the. Uh, I, I generally go toward cards that are not autographed. So I found like a red refractor to five a couple like two years ago, and I grabbed that for like fifteen bucks. I was like, cool. Um, and then I kind of just you know didn't really pay much more attention than that. And then I saw like a gold refractor of the other card that he has in the other the Bowman Chrome set. And it was like 99 cents free shipping. I was like, well, I'm not going to not get it for right. 99 cents. Free shipping. Yeah. <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, like, like a month later, the red refractor of that card surfaced. And I was like, well, I'm going to grab that too for, you know, less than 20 bucks. And I think that one was, it was like $15 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, I kind of kept track of some more of the guy's stuff over time. And then I was like, well, let's just, you know, in the various searches that I go off of on eBay, I, I'm running through all kinds of different things and. I came across this car that we're going to talk about. And I was like, well, this is really great. And it, it was started at auction style. And it, it, after a couple of days, it went up to $3. And I'm like, man, I might be able to get this car for like nothing. Well, I mean, I have to pay something. There's more than three bucks. Right. Tangible, right? Uh, and then it was pulled. And I was like, oh, man, I really wanted to get this card. So I, I messaged the seller and I was like, hey, is it still available? He's like, yeah, but I would need an offer that, you know, would make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And I, so I floated him an offer. After I offered, I like ran an errand. And then I came back and he let me know he, he had it as a bin. Um, and then I, I just went ahead and grabbed it. So this is the um, 2010 Bowman Chrome Prospects. This is the Super Fractor Auto. So this is one of one, official pack issued example. He's got a great signature. I always have appreciated this picture because it seemed almost staged in a way. Because mm-hmm. he's got the Red Sox, um, uh, you know, jersey on and uh, the Red Sox logo, and then the background he's like standing, kind of in this like almost gradient sort of thing in the background, like you take a high school photo. Right. And I've always liked that about this card. And I I remember seeing a scan of this card. Years ago, when I put together a blog post um, entitled uh, Key Superfractor Baseball Cards. Right. And this was one of the scans I found to add into that gallery. That's cool. And I was always like, man, I wonder if I'll ever see this card. And so I kind of kept an eye on the market and see if I could find this card. And when it surfaced, I was like, gosh, it's so cool. You know, I was able to get this card into my archive. Mm-hmm. And so I, I've always had a, like a preference toward 2010 Bowman Chrome. Just that that Bowman, just 2010 Bowman, just as a whole. I've always liked the set design. Um, I mean, Bowman's good most years anyway, but right. I really like the design of this year. And also, I always reminisce of where my life was in 2010. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, in a way, that year kind of made me who I am today. Which is, you know, I'm proud to. I'm proud about that. I'm proud of what I went through in that year. And it was it was a good year for me, like growth wise. But um, it's a great addition. I like this card a lot. I love the Super Fractor this year because the Super Fractor design doesn't go to the edge. Right. Something about 2010 Bowman Chrome. At least this series of it. They had like two series. and the second series, the Super Fractor design went all the way to the edge, but the first series didn't. I thought that was so cool. And I really, I prefer the ones with the, the Super Fractors that don't go all the way to the edge because I like that almost off-white border mm-hmm. that, that the cards feature. It's such a Can nice piece. A Please. It? The case is pretty beat up. Um, I don't know if I'll re-slab it. I doubt I will. It's not that bad. I've had worse. Um, I had a Jake Plummer. I bought it that that Noble like back in twelve. Right. I had that re-slab because that thing was just destroyed. Destroyed. It was, it was just probably bouncing around that box since '97 when it was came, when it came out. <laughs> so uh, this one, I think I'll just leave it. It's it's not that bad. It's, it's pretty scuffed, but I mean, whatever. Yeah. You know, I like that car though. It's a pretty card. Great design. Cool picture. But I want to share that. This is the uh, 2010 Bowman Chrome Prospect Super Fractor Auto Felix de Brandt, uh rookie card. Cool. Well, first Bowman card anyway, right? Yeah. Because it came out before the other, the rookie card version. And, you know, there's a difference. This was before he had his first game in MLB. Right. So they can't put rookie card logo on it. And then when he enters and plays his first game, he plays enough games then they can release a, a card that has the rookie the RC logo on it. That's why you see uh, Steven Strasburg, before he entered in June, that he could get his Bowman Cone card, and it says first Bowman. But then once he played enough games that summer, the next wave of Bowman Cone came out, and it had the rookie card logo right. on it. 
this is in, this is a really in, interesting distinction to make and to understand that some cards will be rookie cards, but they won't be rookie year cards. Right. And I ca I qualify some cards even before rookie year cards as prospect cards. So like. Um, a lot of guys like Jason Hayward's stuff from 2006, 2007, 2008, those are prospect cards, but his rookie card is 2010. Right. But people wouldn't qualify that because he's found in 2006, seven and eight product. But, and those really could be qualified as rookie cards. They're just not rookie year cards. Right. Now, this is kind of like semantically speaking kind of stuff that can get kind of confusing, especially in the modern market. Right. We're talking about Bowman Chrome. So I just want to share this because this is a nice ad. I'm happy to have it. Cool. You have any thoughts? I'm good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like that. Man, what a great autograph. I'm glad I got this because I've always been curious to... I've always wanted this card. There are a couple other pieces in Bowman Chrome for 2010 that I'd like to have, and I just kind of you know, keep an eye out where I can. Can't get them all, of course, but you know, just try to shoot for the ones you like and try to add to your collection as, as, as it works for you. So there you have it. Thank you for tuning in to Radicards TV and Radicards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno, and until next time, enjoy collecting. Take care. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.